and gentlemen, I hope everybody is doing well. I'm sorry for running a couple minutes late. As it turns out, I ended up taking a nap today, so, um, the, uh, yep, running just a couple minutes behind, but that's alright. Um, I'm happy for those of you who stuck around who are gonna, um, hang out with me and draw this really nifty looking weevil. Um, so... I started, excuse me, um, I started with its, um, I started with its scientific name on the board, but I, I think it's Cyphoforest, no, I had it right, Cyphoforest. Alright, I guess that is how to spell it. Alright, so, um, uh, we have this weevil, its name is a Cyphophorus species. Um, it's native to the American Southwest. Um, I collected mine in Arizona. Um, there are two species in this genus. There's the species that feeds on agave, and then there's the species that feeds on yucca. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how to tell the two apart, um, other than finding them directly on their host plant. So, um, so we are gonna just stick with the genus until we know more, because I would rather have a little bit less information and it be completely correct than have all the way to species and it may not be right. So, we will do genus. Um, you're going to see my left hand. So, I was, um, I was volunteering at a local nature center and moving rocks and stuff. I got a blister, so don't, um, sorry about that. That's going to be in the stream when I'm sketching. That'll be fine. But that's what it is, in case anyone asks. Um, Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just get going. Um, we're going to be zooming in and zooming out of this beetle over the course of time. If you need a little bit more time on a certain image, um, or you are, um, just let me know in the chats and we can stick around a little bit longer. I always have another story to tell so if you have, if you would like me to leave an image up for a little bit, that's alright. I'm sure I'll be able to fill the time with something else. So we're looking at Cyphophorus species. Um, it's a weevil. And Weevil's scientific name is Curculionidae. Curculionidae. That's going to be the family name for all Weevils, um, not only just in the U.S., but all Weevils in the world. Um, it is a huge family. There are many, many species of weevils, and then inside of the weevil family, you also have bark beetles. Um, they're a special subfamily within weevils. Um, but there are so many of them. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my USB camera for a minute so that we can move our specimen around. I want to see if I can get it all in frame. I thought that there might be a chance. Maybe if I turned it this way. But I'm just not going to be able to get the whole specimen underneath our microscope. So what I'm going to do is leave that there and pull my specimen over here so that I can measure it. 
I know that a lot of you guys who are in nature journaling like to know the measurement in centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and start from the very top of the snow and kind of try and round it off as I go around so that I add the snout into the, um, into the measurement of our specimen. So our specimen is about 2 or 2.1 centimeters. It could be just a little bit over 2 centimeters long. Um, when we are looking at it from the top as our microscope sees it, um, this right here is the pronotum. It's that first segment of the thorax. And back here, those are the elytra or the wings. <coughs> Some weevils... Most weevils have the ability to open up these wings and fly, um, although there are a variety of desert beetles um, where their elytra are fused together. Um, this helps them store body moisture, but um, it makes it so that they can't fly. Um, I'm not sure which one this beetle is. I've been trying to decide if we were going to do a dorsal sketch or a lateral sketch. I honestly, I think lateral might be our better bet because of the shape of his body. Yeah, I think we're going to do a lateral sketch of our weevil friend here. So if we look at this side of its head, we will be able to see not only its head, but its antenna. That's pretty good for now. <clears throat> All right, since we're drawing a lateral view, it's going to be, I'm gonna be drawing it in this direction. I'm just gonna turn my paper so that I can see it a little bit better. Um, I do need to make sure that um, my weevil is gonna stay on the page, so a lot of times I'll sketch really lightly. A lot of times I'll sketch really lightly um, just to make sure it's going to stay on the page. So let's see. Oh, that's probably. All right. So the back, so the head is kind of bulbous up here in the front and then starts the nose section. We call it the rostrum. Yes. We call it the rostrum. So this whole nose type segment right here is what we call, let me spell it for you, 
the rostrum, and it is not the mouth. Oh, there's this misunderstanding that this part right here is a really long mouth part. It is not. The mouth parts are actually little itty bitty tiny, and they're right here at the very, very end of the rostrum. And they're chewing mouth parts. He has little itty bitty chewing mouth parts. And so this right here is just like a, a nose like or an elephant like extension of his head. Um, and that is why the antenna connect directly to the rostrum. So you'll see right about here we have the antenna coming directly out of the rostrum and it is small coming up to very large. Um, this weevil, um, I believe Siphophora, this ge Siphophorus, this genus of weevil is named after its cup-like antenna. So that last antenna segment, if you look at it turned, it kind of looks like a cup. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in my antenna really quickly. I don't need to add circles. Ouch. I just need to add a line to give myself an idea of how long it's going to be. And then I'm going to move back over here to our pronotum. Our pronotum is actually fair. Oh, Sammy. My cat is trying to figure out a way to come up and see me, and I don't think she can right now. I've got too many bugs around. Um. Hi, baby. All right. I've got a pronotum that comes back from the head. And then, let's see. Elytra. Abdomen. And a leg. Another leg. And a third leg. Don't you dare, Sammy. There we go. <gasps> Sammy. I know. Come here. You can't be interrupting my live stream, baby girl. Aw, do you guys hear her meowing? Come on, baby. You're in between me and my sketch. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sammy. She wants to be loved. Maybe she'll stay here on my lap. All right, so we've got our head taken care of, our pronotum sketch, our elytra. Um, this is a very light sketch, but it just gives me an idea of how big its body is going to be to make sure that I'm able to keep the whole thing on one page. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in really close to that head because I want to show you the compound eyes on this beetle. It's either a yucca weevil or an agave weevil. Um, the two look very, very similar and are in the same genus, which is this one up here, Siphophorus. Um, I just got done giving the overall sketch, and for your notes, if you like to keep the measurement on your paper, um, Siphophorus, this specimen, is about 2 centimeters, maybe 2.1 centimeters long. <coughs> All right. And I was just trying to show the eyes of this beetle, but it's being a little trickier than I thought it would be. The fact 
it's just a black beetle. I could get make the I could make the light not as bright. I wonder if that would add to the contrast. Alright, so I do know what the eyes look like, so I'll be able to sketch and kind of describe them to you. I was hoping to be able to at least see kind of like an edge of an eye. I see it on this side. Yeah, exactly. His it's very the um this is a very very dark black. So I added a little bit of light and I turned our specimen so that it's looking directly into the light. And if we look right about here, there's this little line here, and that's the edge of its eye. It's right here. Um, it doesn't help that our weevil's eye is the exact same color as its exoskeleton, so there's a little differentiation, but it's really, really hard to see if you don't know what you're looking for. And it's kind of this moon-like shape. So um, this is where the snout starts. And the eye is kind of wrapped around the snout right here. Um, so when I sketch it, we've got this head section. Let's see. We have this head section that's very round up here at the head and up here on the bottom. And then I'm gonna make it kind of cut in a little bit because that's where the rostrum starts. And the eye is kind of like this. It's this compound eye that wraps a little bit around the rostrum. And then I like to fill my eyes with cross hatching just so that I know that's kind of where it was. Um, now, as we're continuing down the head of the weevil, there is, oh, hi, Nancy. I hope you're doing well. Um, so we're going down the snout of the weevil and the snout is called the rostrum. All right, so um, the first little section of our rostrum is kind of wide from here to here. You can see that it's kind of, um, kind of thicker Let's see. And that there's, um, and the antenna are connected right there where the, where the rostrum is kind of thicker. Um, and then it will kind of smooth down and be a little bit more narrow. So let's see, that's going to be the thicker part of our rostrum. We have our antenna segment. We're going to do that on the other side so that, um, we can see it a little bit better. And we can go ahead and scooch down our rostrum so that we know what it looks like. Which is just essentially a beak. Let's see. Oh, I went too fast. So this is that thicker part of the rostrum, and then it comes down pretty thin like a straw. Keep in mind that it is not a straw-like mouth part. This whole beak section, it's not a mouth. That is actually an extension of its nose, uh, of its face. 
<laughs> it still looks similar to an anteater. Yeah, so anteaters, they've got that very, very long kind of mouth, and then they have that little tongue that sticks out. These guys have that same kind of longer beak-like feature, but at the very, very end of it, they have little mandibles. This is, they have little chewing mouth parts. And a lot of times, weevils, well, all of the time, weevils eat vegetation. They eat plants. Um, some weevils that have really long snouts like this are also called acorn weevil. There are also acorn weevils that have really long, thin beaks. Um, and they chew through acorns. And it's really cute. I love weevils. They have little adorable faces, okay? All right. I'm going to turn our weevil around because the antenna is way easier to see on the other side. Ta-da! All right. So we have this segment right here that's nice and long, and then... One, two, three, four, five, six segments that are small and gradually getting larger to this seventh segment here that is large and cup-like and is the name and is the basis for their genus name. What cool antenna! I agree. I think that they're a lot of fun. So we're gonna go ahead and sketch these guy this guy. What is the function of that club-like last segment? Um, I, <laughs> I'm not too sure. Let me go ahead and see if, um, see if that information is out there. The antenna club is retracted and concave. I'm not sure what the actual purpose is of that cup-like segment on the antenna. Um, antenna have, depending on what type of insect you're looking at, an antenna can be used to smell, they can be used to hear, they can be used to taste, and they can be used to touch. And um, a lot of times there's just a huge variety and variation in the antennas that, in the antennae that, um, that just create these different shapes. I know that this, this antenna is really interesting because not only does it look kind of, it ends like that, but if we were to look at it head on, we would notice that that is actually a little cup. Um, it's not a complete antenna. It's not a complete half circle. It actually goes in a little bit like this. Um, and so it's a really nifty antenna, but I'm not sure what the function is of it. He's so cool. All right, so I'm pretty, I'm already pretty happy with our little weevil, and we only have his head taken care of. So we're going to be moving back onto his thorax. Keep in mind, this, our thorax is going to be at three segmented the, um, the pro, the meso, and the meta, right? All right. 
right, so this is going to be what the back of our pronotum looks like. Oh, what the what the lateral of our pronotum looks like. Let's see. He looks well built. Yeah, he um he is a little powerful weevil. But he's not a predator, so he wouldn't be any he wouldn't be injurious to anyone. So our pronotum is rounded pretty much exactly with the with the edging of our of our rostrum. So I might make this even more smooth. Um, so I'm kind of reimagining where this angle is so that I know kind of where the pronotum is going to be coming off. And it looks like I wasn't too far off, maybe about a, an eighth of an inch or something. Our pronotum is going to be coming down more like this. And um, it does kind of end at this little bit of an angle. So as you're going out where it meets our second segment of the thorax, it's going to be kind of angled back in a little bit. And then it can kind of turn over and connect in the bottom. Our first pair of legs are going to be connected right here. And as we know, the hip bone is that coxa. So it's right here. All right. Um, our leg is bent in a little bit, so I'm going to be turning our specimen so that we can see the leg. And today we're just going to be drawing the inside from the front to the back. So I already got our antenna sketched in. We're going to do the front leg first, the middle leg second, and the last leg last. We'll just do it in order. Um, feeling like doing something a little different. I'm looking to see which leg I think we should do, the front left or the front right. It just depends on what it looks like through a microscope. All right, so I like this one better than the other side, but it's Tarsier flipped in the wrong direction. So I'll describe to you what I mean by that. Um, right here, this is our femur, that's that first segment of the leg, and this is our tibia coming down. Our tarsal segments, a lot of times, are supposed to be pointing in this forward direction, but it's pacing, it's pacing backwards. Um, so when we sketch our weevil, we're going to be taking these segments and putting them forward, but other than that, the rest of that leg looks pretty good. All right, so our femur is actually pretty wide and is likely equally as wide as the coxa. So I just made my coxa just a little bit more narrow so that it wasn't too egregiously large. We've got a femur and it comes up. Yeah, and as you can imagine, there's some type of midline right about here coming from the eye, if you imagined kind of a line that's through the middle, through the eye, and then right about here, that's going to be our midline, and that's going to be where it's okay for our leg to come up to. Um, then we have our tibia, and it's coming downward. with a little tibial spine going in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on our, I'm gonna zoom in on the tarsal segments so that we can see exactly how many there are. It looks like they have little yellow pads on them.
There we go. Sorry, me and my microscope are over here fighting. So he looks like he's got this variety of kind of orange fluff or orange padding on his tarsal segments. Uh, weevils uh, have an apparently 444 tarsal formula, so that's what I was seeing here, and I googled it just to make sure that that's what I was seeing. Um, it's got that segment pattern where you've got one, two, three, and then you've got your fourth segment is really small and practically you can't see where it is, and then the fifth one is long with claws on the end of it. I'll go ahead and sketch it and show you what I um, and show you what I'm seeing. All right, so our first segment is going to be kind of long and a little bit triangular, and then as they continue on, they get kind of more triangular and shorter. So one, two, three. Apparently, 444. So you do the two that are rectangular, and then our third one is going to be more heart shaped. It's going to kind of come in just a little bit like this, like a little toe pad. Um, and then our fourth segment is actually very, very small and kind of tucked up in between those two toes to a point where you don't even really sketch it because you don't really see it at all. And then you've got this last segment that kind of comes up from that and it kind of is larger and more teardrop shape and it's got these two little claws on the end of it. All right, and so that's going to be kind of our tarsal formula, but then at the bottom of this segment and likely these two, the first three segments, you've got that gold, um, that gold fluff or that gold hair on it, those pads. Um, I'm going to come back over here and erase any of these lines that go through my leg because obviously the leg is on top. And I like to go back in and thicken my lines and make sure that I know exactly where I wanted them to be. And this middle line doesn't need to be here. It was just a guideline. Alright, so that is my pronotum, or my first segment of my weevil's body. Has anyone out there seen cool bugs in the last little bit? Seen any pretty butterflies or dragonflies or... Any insects in the gardens or... Have you walked by any flowers recently? Lots of stingy things. Yeah, that's gonna happen. Especially if you've got a, a diverse yard with raspberries and all types of stuff. Alright, I'm trying to get the rest of the body in focus for us. So we can see up here, these are our, these are our wings. Um, they're coming around and down and curling over, and
and then you can see the wings don't go as far as the abdomen. The abdomen goes a little bit further, and then you can see these are this is the segmentation on the abdomen. So we can see this. Um, this area of our body pretty well. We can also see our legs and r that really obvious kind of pad-like tarsal segment that I was talking about with the first leg that's going to be on every single pair of legs. We might even be able to get a really good view of them a little bit later. So that's what we're looking at here. They're eating your berries! Oh no! They must be looking for a water source or a nectaring source. They must be really thirsty. Have you guys had a drought? body a little bit. <clears throat> oh, that's going to be so much fun. Are you going to be taking pictures and stuff? I love black lighting. Alright, so I got a little bit of a sketch taken care of for our body. What I was trying to do was give myself kind of those outer edges. So I think this line is going to be my final line for its back. But then we've got that the wing kind of ends a little bit earlier than the body. So I'm going to be sketching out the wing kind of like this, kind of round and then coming back. All right, so that's going to be my winged segment. Hmm. Not sure. And then our abdomen is going to be coming down to this point here. And as you can see, right about here, behind our elytra, there's this little line. That is a lateral line, kind of a midline. And so we can go ahead and use that. It comes down right about here. And we can use that as part of our guides. Um, very good. I'm going to erase some of these lines we no longer need to make it look just a little bit prettier. All right, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere. Okay. Um, along the bottom of our body, we do have a fairly even um, bottom, too. So I'm going to take it from this angle and just kind of follow this line over. We do have some segmentation and things to worry about, but our body is pretty symmetrical. We're probably going to add a little bit of texturing in here in the abdomen where we have segments, but we'll see how that happens. Um, we have a middle leg that's going to be starting right in this region. Um, you can see it has that hip bone or what we call the coxa right here, um, right about there. And then it comes out as a femur. And then the tibia. And I'll just go ahead and shrink these words so they all fit. There we go. So we have the coxa, the femur, and the tibia. And then these are the little tarsal segments. Um, I guess I could write tarsal in here too. It's not going to get too small, I don't think. Just so that you can read them. Okay.
So I've got this middle segment that has this coxa right about here. Let's see. And then the femur is going to be coming up from that. Um, our leg is kind of a little lazy, but I'm going to kind of re-sketch it so that it's even with our front leg. So we're going to be kind of pulling that. We're going to be kind of pulling that femur up. And its knee is going to probably go right above the, right above the um, elytra. We'll be taking pictures and preserving some specimens. Oh, very cool. So I also do, that's funny enough, I also do kind of dress rehearsals. I call them kind of test nights before I blacklight, especially at any of like the local nature centers or parks because I want to make sure that I kind of know what species we're going to be finding and what things to expect. Um, it also gives me the ability to kind of look stuff up ahead of time in case there's something that shows up that I've never seen before. Um, you know, st things still come show up every now and again that I haven't seen night of, but it's always a great idea to do something like that, like a dress rehearsal or a practice night, and then to bring handouts of things that you've seen there in the past. I do like little moth scavenger hunts um, with commonly seen species, and it makes people really excited. Um, I think next time I'm actually going to make, make them individual bingo boards um, and then make it all different types of stuff. I think that that would make it really interesting. Oh, no problem. You had to pause. That makes sense. I thought for a minute that you were gone, um, but I'm glad to hear that you are back. You were just thinking of bingo boards. You know what? You're allowed to do it. That would be so much fun. And, um, man, I'm going to have to do that. right here it has all of these little spines these very very thick kind of rows of spines all around the tibia I count four one two three four I don't know if I've ever seen that that's really cool let me check it I'm gonna go check it out on the microscope but wow that is so cool All uh, right, and then if we zoom all the way down to the tarsal segment, which is what I was excited about, you can actually see the tibia has two bigger spines and then one kind of medial, this might be a longer hair. Um, it has little razor rows. Exactly. They look so sharp. I wonder if they use them to like cut the cactus or something, to cut the plant. Because they do, I don't know. So I know that their grubs will bore inside of either um, yucca or inside of agave. Um, so I know that they bore, so they'll actually kind of chew through it. But there's a part of me that wonders if they will use that to kind of slice at the agave to, like, make it juicy so that they can drink from it easier. Knife shins. <laughs> I love it. Yep, that's what he needs. And so he doesn't have just one of these tibial spines. He actually has two tibial spines and then a hair kind of in between them. Um... And then we're looking at our segments. Like I had mentioned before, it's got one, kind of two of these smaller segments.
And then that third segment, from the side, like we're looking at it right now, it doesn't look very heart-shaped. It kind of just looks like a cup. But I promise if you were looking at it from the top, it would look like a heart. And then there's this little, little bitty, tiny segment in between the little, the, right there. And then this is our last one. So that's one, two... Three, four, five. All right, so that is going to be our friend here. And then we've got, we still have some of those little golden hairs on the bottom of our, of uh, the bottom of our, blah, on the bottom of our tarsal segments. I actually have a class like that. Um, it's funny that you mention it because I have a class where we talk, I talk to students about different insect adaptations and then they build their own insect. And then afterwards, I ask them um, what they would design, if there are any inventions that they could think of that they would like um, in, that are inspired by an insect adaptation. Like... Um, adding knife chins to your adaptations or like um, do they want an exoskeleton so it doesn't fall hurt to fall off a bike or you know all types of funny things so um, I love thinking about that type of stuff like what can we learn from insects so I'm gonna go ahead and add this oh I didn't turn my desktop camera back on um, so we are looking right about here, and that's going to be the end of our thorax, right? So our thorax is where our legs are connected and our wings are connected. Um, a lot of times it goes, the elytra, or the wings, go further past the thorax, but this is where the thorax actually ends. And that's why when people say, make sure that the pin is in the thorax, you put it through the wing right about here on the right-hand side of its body. Um... Anyway, so uh, we're going to go ahead and add our third leg, and it's going to be coming out actually right about where our uh, middle leg is coming down, so it's going to be a little bit in the way, but I'm going to be tucking it kind of behind, so let's see. So something like that, where our femur gets wider at the end than in the front, and then it comes off, I'm going to angle it just a little bit more, and then it comes off and has those two tibial spines. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on those toe segments because I think that you will like this. You do that with your first grade field trip. Aww. Oh, I love it. So you're able to talk about different habitats, different insects, and different adaptations. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I absolutely love teaching about insects, is you can hit so many topics with just these one type of animals. He does have pretty feet. Oh, he makes me so happy. So we have one two little itty bitty segments and then they're so specialized yes and then you can talk about niches and you can talk about micro habitats and you can talk about you can talk about an entire food web just with insects if you wanted to um he even has orange foot fur yeah i was saying that it was kind of gold but I guess it could just be orange, too. So, 
So this is that cup-like segment. And it's funny because if you were ever identifying one of these beetles, it would say that its tarsal formula was apparently 444, but actually 555. And that's because um, it looks like there are four segments on these on the tarsal segments. There are four tarsal segments on each. But if you look in between is the in between that third segment, right about here, there's a little itty bitty micro segment that pretty much no one can see, so we don't count it. Um, but it exists. So it's actually five five five, even though it's apparently four four four. has been getting mad at me like halfway through the lessons and I don't know why all right I will be right back I promise all right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back, and my microscope is back. I'm just gonna, yeah, there we go. Now my microscope is back, and it's all zoomed in. We are all ready to go. I don't think it's overheating. It's something to do with my computer. So it's this funny thing that happens. My computer doesn't like for my, for my desk camera and my microscope camera to be on at the same time. It doesn't do well. So I have to turn on and off this camera to turn that one on. So like that's why you this that's why my sketch disappears every time I have to go in live um uh, every time I have to go and move the microscope because I'm just kind of actively turning it on and off all day. Um so there's something weird that happens sometimes where this camera just gets mad at the microscope camera and kicks it off completely and won't let it come back. So it's some type of something or another. If I had a tech guru, like a really good tech guru in my life, they would be able to answer these questions for me. Oh, come on. Well, I'm glad that we can see the sketch because the microscope isn't letting me move it right now, but that's fine. So we are looking at the last handful of segments of the abdomen. We are looking here. One, two, three, four, five. Five? It looks like our weevil has about five abdominal segments. <clears throat> See, that's what I'm wondering. There might be a sixth one at the very end. I believe weevils are supposed to have six abdominal segments, but we are only seeing five. Um, we can say apparent apparently five abdominal segments and then we'd be right so I'm gonna go in and add these segmentation so one all right and then at every single one of these lines where there where it touches the bottom I'm just gonna give it it's not even enough to not even enough to like add a space. I'm just giving it this little bit of segmentation so that it looks like um, each segment kind of fits into the last one. 
And that's going to give us just that little bit of interest of like, um, I guess, texture in between the segmentation. So that when we zoom it on out, we can see our whole friend. Aww. I'm going to go ahead and add the, um, the punctations on the elytra that run long ways. I'll do this better with pen when I go over. Sometimes I do come back and I go over my sketches with pen. Um, let's see. Something like that. Ah, he's so cute. I love him. Oh, I don't know where I'm located. You don't know where I'm located. I'm located in Philly, so it is pretty warm. Um, my microscope isn't getting hot to the touch. My camera is not getting hot to the touch, but I do have four lights running right now, so it does get pretty warm right here in the hot seat. Um, aw, he's so cute. All right. Did everyone get um, the information that they needed from our weevil? Did we get them all sketched out? I'm feeling really good about this. I know there's never a lot of us on Sundays, but I'm glad that you came out and joined me today. It doesn't have anything to do with the out the outlet. It's the computer itself. It's the USB ports. Yeah! He makes me happy. Alright, so this little weevil friend is gonna be waddling off. Um, just an hour today, but that's alright. We are doing great. Um, thank you so much for spending your Sunday with me, coming out and hanging out with me for an hour to sketch and talk insects and look at our little weevil friend here. This is Out School. That's where you can find me teaching to younger students, 5 to 8, 9 to 12. If you know a little young person in your life that really likes bugs or wants to learn a little bit more about them, come and join me in one of my classes. I have a bug club. I have weekly insect studies. We do scientific illustration with the little ones too. Um, we do all types of fun stuff. Uh, feel free to make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you hit the little bell, it'll notify you when I go live. And sometimes I go live for on surprise. So, so make sure that you hit that no subscribe button. Um, this is my PayPal link. It's where you can send me a donation if you would like. If you, um, if you spent all day with me and you really learned something, you enjoyed sketching, um, you've been coming for a while and just thought you might want to buy me coffee, come ahead and um, go ahead and follow that link there. If you're looking for me on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, and you go add Insectopia and you can't find me, that's because you need to add that 2015 at the end. So I like to leave this link here, add Insectopia 2015. Um, that's my link for Facebook and Instagram. So I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm going to go ahead and, yes, catch more bugs, but also I have some pinning to do, and I definitely have some labels to print and make, so I have a little bit of collection maintenance that I have to take care of. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your night, and stay buggy!